Hello everyone. We from Sujati Academy once again present a dance ballet, Anantya, the Infinite. As the trend goes these days, Anantya is a sequel to the ballet Kasmyaham that we presented four years ago before the pandemic. As part of Kasmyaham, we depicted a conversation between man and his god, where man asks God the most profound question, Who am I? God takes him through a magical journey within himself and reveals several truths before revealing the most profound truth that man and God are one and the same and that man is infinite. Here is a flashback depiction of this. My child, you seem to have a question. Lord, who am I? You are powerful and you are infinite. Yes, you are the God that you seek. We now kick off our ballet Anantya from here. Armed with the truth that he is infinite, man is in extreme bliss initially. But soon, this knowledge triggers arrogance within man. And he calls his God once again. In this ballet, God is depicted as man's inner voice. Does man understand the entire truth? Are there forces and energies beyond man's perceived understanding of the world? Sit back and get ready to be part of this magical journey as we unfold Anantya, the infinite. What happened now, my child? I thought you had a great realization about yourself and you were in bliss. My lord? Ha! Huh, no, you are just my inner voice, right? Hmm, okay. But what happened? Why do you look so frustrated? I just can't deal with the imperfections in everyone. They are all so ignorant and annoying. Hmm, but they are all human. Everyone has imperfections. Ha! Huh, not me. I am perfect. I am infinite and I am divine. I cannot live among these lowly people. 
Oh, arrogance. So what do you want? I just want to be on my own with no one around. Ah, hold on. Be careful what you wish for. It may come true. Of course, that's what I want. Me alone in my own perfect world. Are you sure? Yes, of course. All right, here you go. Now what happened? There are ghosts all around me. Where? I see and hear them everywhere. Oh, I think I have to reveal another truth to you. What truth? Enough. Just save me from this haunted place. The place is not haunted and these are not ghosts. What? These are just your own thoughts from the depths of your subconscious mind. Every thought leads to an emotion. and every emotion needs to be shared or expressed since you are alone and there is no one around these emotions are expressing themselves back to you what my thoughts my emotions why i am not able to recognize them because you are seeing them through the window of your external senses now let me take you and help you open the window into yourself and into your subconscious mind just sit down and meditate now look out of this window this gives you a peek into yourself takes you deep within your own subconscious mind wow this is so new never seen this this window was always there within you you never went into yourself now look out sorry look within now see the ghosts transform themselves they are just the nine emotions or navarasas your emotions watch them behold hasya rasa depicting laughter and happiness and karuna depicting sorrow
Now look at the conflict between bhayanakam or fear and viram or courage. Look at Shringara defining love and joy and Raudra showing anger. Now the battle between Adbhuta or wonder and Bhibatsya or disgust. Connecting with myself is magical. I suddenly feel this extreme sense of peace. Because when you become aware of your eight emotions, you experience the ninth emotion called Shantarasa or inner peace. Watch the magical Shantarasa. Shanti Reva Shanti Shanti Sabha Shanti Redhi Yato yata samiha se tato nam abhayam kuru Shanna kuru prajabhyo bhayanna pashubhya Sushanti bhavatu Sushanti bhavatu Wow! But don't we experience thoughts and emotions always? We can't keep meditating just to be aware. True. When you experience an emotion, it is meant to be shared with someone around. Sharing makes you aware. But with who? Everyone is so imperfect. How will they even understand? Oh, if they are imperfect, go and cover their imperfections and complete them. And allow them to cover your imperfections and complete you. Complete me? But I am infinite. You told me that I am infinite. Of course I said so. And you are infinite. But why are you limiting yourself within this body and this mind? What do you mean? Of course this is me. Okay, let me ask. What according to you is a part of you? Anything that sustains my life is a part of me. Okay, how about your hands, feet, your heart, brain and lungs? Yes, they sustain my life. They are me. Great. Now look out. 
You depend on millions of people to sustain yourself. Farmers, doctors, community helpers and so many more. Now see the tree. It breathes and gives out oxygen which sustains your life. Farmers nurture and sustain the tree and the crops that give the food that sustain your life. Animals sustain your life. Animals and forests sustain each other and the balance they create sustains your life. The movement of galaxies, revolution of planets, the Earth's rotation, the balance in the Earth's atmosphere, the temperature control on Earth, the amount of water on Earth. Everything is so perfectly balanced and occurring repeatedly, sustaining life, sustaining you and your life. Any change in this will kill life. Similarly, you sustain the creation around you. All living and non-living things are part of you. The entire creation is an extension of you. You are the universe and the universe is you, making you infinite. Now I understand infinite. How do I experience it? By taking yourself off this isolation and connecting back with the rest of creation and embracing that as part of you and as an extension of you, then you will be endless, boundless, infinite and anantya, which is God. So, what do you want to do? Remember, what you wish will come true. I just want to connect with the rest of the world again. Sorry. I just want to connect with the rest of myself again and feel boundless and infinite. So be it. May you be boundless and anantya. Let's go. 